beautiful morning here at Victoria Peak. We are currently in Hong Kong. Welcome guys. I hope you're all having a fantastic morning. Today is a special day because I get to see a longtime friend of mine. His name is Victor Chang. He's a local photographer and I really want to introduce you guys to him and talk about his work and his approach to photography. Now Hong Kong is a very diverse city and there's so many things to photograph so we're gonna try to explore the city as much as possible. Victor where are you man? Come over here. See how long it takes him to get up the hill. <laughs> What's up, man? One second. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going, Alex? Good to see you, man. Good to see you again. So Victor uh, was actually born here in Hong Kong, and he moved to Toronto when he was two years old. Three. Three years old. Close enough. So he was raised in Toronto for the most part, and then he and I became friends there. Yeah. And then we really started talking about photography, about you know the way that we saw the world in terms of our art and how we want to go about creating our own uh, work and trying to be as diverse as possible and stand out. And he, throughout that process, developed this really unique perspective, which I kind of, you want to describe how yeah, you work so is? What I do is I, I make things really bright and natural. I keep the, the color tones really saturated. Uh, the red and blues are bumped up as, as high as I can. Um, but I keep it bright and very whimsical style feeling. Um, whether it be like a very big, chaotic background, I put a little person in tiny in the middle of it. Um, I make that pop out and instead of people saying wow, they go wow, you know. So it's like the best way to describe it I would say is like chaotic order in the minimalistic sense. So you have a person but then the background is this kind of crazy environment, these architectural buildings and you also diversify in the sense that it's not just architecture, he also goes into these extreme landscapes and he photographs them as well. Hence why I wanted to come up here, even though it's a very foggy day. I don't know why we're here today. It's like super <laughs> muddy and wet. Our shoes are all dirty, yeah. you know. <laughs> white shoes. We didn't even coordinate our outfits, I don't but know somehow. What's going on. We're wearing white shoes, <laughs> we're wearing dark colors. It's okay. Know. It's it's a it's a new trend. Yeah. We're gonna start new trends here, right? So today uh, we have to go see a bunch of different spots. Yeah. You made a list of places that he wants to take me to. What's yeah. the first spot we're gonna go so to? The first spot, a very popular spot in Hong Kong, is called Monster Mansion, aka Quarry Bay Station. I've seen she's always on Instagram before. It's popular, it's overdone, but you know. It is really overdone, but you know what? It's okay because we're going to come there with a fresh new perspective and hopefully create some really awesome content for you guys to check out. It's really foggy up here, so there's not much for us to kind of photograph, so let's head down. Let's do it. All right, yeah. guys, see you soon. Yo, this is, this is such a dope That's shot. That's a nice shot, man. Yeah. I'll pop that up on the screen so you guys can see it, but... This is what I love about this guy's work, is just that he finds these crazy backdrops. And right now, we're at, we're at the Monster, Monster Mansion. Mansion. Yeah, we're in the middle of it. It's pretty busy still, although it's like around 6 p.m., but people are coming in and out still. There's a lot of people. I don't even want to show you guys behind this guy because the there's like, up. Yeah, there's literally lineup. And we're just here, you know, doing our interview. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> so dude, okay, tell me, where did you get your inspiration for uh, shooting this type of, I guess, style in terms of I think of like living in Hong Kong is a really benefit because like it's everywhere. Wherever you go in Hong Kong, it's packed with buildings, people, and color. And so like every building I see, either be office space or for housing, it's like incredibly amounts, a vast amount of like just residency, you know, it's like, think of like, Houses in Toronto, but packed up in height, not in like horizontally, but like just like insane amount of floors, and every space is like tiny little um, rooms that people live in. But that's just life here, man. So it, basically, I guess your inspiration started here. But what if you weren't in a, in a place like this? What would be your suggestion for someone who maybe lives in like a, a different part of the world that doesn't have this abundance of architecture and this really vastness of it? I would say like find that niche thing that people like about your content and just go for that. So if you're posting like flat lays, posting like food or whatever it is, if you don't have like this abundance of architecture in your area, find what works for you and just go for that thing only. And when did you start shooting on the ESR? I got this about two months ago. Um, it's a new Canon from a Canon mirrorless camera. It's light, so it's good for traveling. It has a flip screen, so it's good for vlogging too. I know. 
This would save me so yeah. much time. You guys know my my struggles when it comes to focusing. Heavy, I just like, like a toy for him. <laughs> this is a toy. <laughs> I think that's what I I mentioned this a lot of times in my videos that I have difficulty switching over to mirrorless yeah. because of the weight. I like having a heavy camera, but I won't lie. It is nice to have one that is kind of yeah. uh, lightweight and it's you know good, man. practical. Like, like you can walk in your around backpack with it. and it's light. You know, yeah. You have to carry like, a tripod and then a whole Wendy X. Dude, how many times have you actually been to the spot? I feel when like this I, guy comes here all the time. And honestly, when I moved here, at least every weekend I was here. Like whenever someone would come from Paris or New York, I would bring them right here because this is like the spot to be in Hong Kong, and it's like really popular. So if you don't come here, you don't. You never probably very much. You've never been to Hong Kong. You don't come here. Yeah, no, you guys definitely have to check this place out. It's yeah. a really hidden gem in Hong Kong. I mean, it's not that hidden anymore. It's kind of very much exposed by it's social pretty much media. Like, yeah. So what I think in terms of giving you guys feedback on his editing or shooting style is that you want to find spaces that have uh, almost an opportunity for you to create a backdrop. So it's a two-dimensional space where you have your main subject and then the space behind them. So in this case, the photo you took of me, it, I'm in the image and yes, I am the main focus, but the backdrop is what's helping to illustrate and really guide your attention to where I am as yeah. a location. It is there to also push you in terms of like making you want to go there. Yeah. They're very much, I don't want to say they're touristic photos that yeah. you take, but they make you want to go to those destinations. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they really pull you in. It's like, you can almost feel like you could be you. Yeah. And I like that, you know, it's realistic. Uh, some of my photos are a little bit more extreme. I don't feel like no one can nah, just kind of really go on a mountain top, yeah. you know, yeah. but like, uh, I think that's that's important is like you create content that people can feel like they could do yeah. and yeah. that's something that you guys should definitely It doesn't consider. have to be an epic location, it could be a like very ordinary scene but the way you shoot at different angles and just having that vast background in the back will, you know, trying to draw attention to that place. And another thing he really focuses on is colors. So as you guys can tell, this building is very colorful. It has this really nice aqua kind of faded blue the reds that pop, and then when you go to edit it in this post-production, he really focuses on color. He highlights color and makes it prominent. Um, and that's a way to keep that consistency in his style. And yeah. Whenever I see your photo pop up on my feed, I'm like, I know it's his, because it's like, <laughs> you it's like it colorful. Does? Of course, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been following you for how many years now? I mean, but we're real life friends, right? And that's important, real life friends, guys. <laughs>
-hmm. My third tip is symmetry because symmetry makes every photo, well, first for me, I, I have OCD in like symmetry. Um, I have every photo perfectly in the middle lined up because I like to have things equally balanced left and right. And so for a tip, you guys, if you guys have a camera like me, I have to have my camera settings on my grid pattern. So I have these perfectly lines left and right on the X and Y axis so that when I shoot, I can see that middle point of like, let's say, that window on the left, window on the right, I have that line in the middle. And so whether it be I'm standing in the left side, if it's not too straight, I move a little to the left, move a bit to the right, All right so dude, I get that. Listen, listen, listen. We're running out of time. It's, yeah, it's getting late. clearly really dark yeah, it's right dark. now. I kind of disappeared. I'm sorry, guys. I, this place is incredible. I have to just photograph as much wait, wait, as I can. Can we get a coffee first? I mean, for you? Uh, let's do it. I'm okay, okay, fine. Let's do it. <laughs> Where are we going? Uh, next stop, Temple Street. Temple Street, you guys ready for it? Let's do it. We just walked uh, through Temple Street, which is this really nice boulevard. Shopping district full of tourism, but they have to buy these souvenirs for Hong Kong. Yeah, like me and Maori spent like an hour negotiating deals on chopsticks. <laughs> it's okay, we got the chopsticks. Good deal on it too. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up there, right behind you. And we're gonna get a nice shot of Temple Street. Uh, this is like a very popular vantage point that a lot of photographers come and take pictures of. Victor is gonna show us how minimalistic photography is done from... I'm kidding, I'm kidding, it's not that. But there is actually one technique for trying to uh, minimize the amount of noise there is here and that's focusing on the subject and sometimes that involves just taking a picture of a taxi in front of Temple Street. Yeah. There's lots of neon lights behind us. After this, we're gonna go grab some food because I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. Yeah. Let's go up there. Here at the lookout that uh, presents basically Temple Street and it's all its glory, a beautiful yeah. street lit up. And I know that one of the main focuses uh, in terms of details that Victor really pays attention to is color. So, uh, I mean, I'll let him speak about that a lot more, but yeah. it's one thing that you guys should try to focus on if you want to not master his, his style, but uh, kind of really think about what he is looking for when he's going out and shooting. Yeah, so color for me is important because I focus a lot on buildings. So the building itself is like pink or it's blue. I, I tend to emphasize that color because it's unique. It stands out from the rest of the crowd, the rest of the, the city. So when I shoot, I always look for color the first thing I do. Color is very important, not only because obviously it's color, but it emphasizes certain details yeah. in an image and it can draw the viewer's attention to focus on elements of the photo that may have been missed. So color is a very important detail that Victor pays attention to when he's shooting at locations. It's something that you should really take into consideration as well when you're yeah. going out shooting. And if you do it properly, you can create that consistency in your feed while focusing on certain colors. So in my photos, as many of you know, I love my oranges yeah. uh, and I desaturate my blues. Yeah, yeah. I like my gray, my greens and my, my grays. Uh, and those are uh, ways that I try to keep the consistency yeah. and, and the look of my f images. For me, it's a lot of pinks and blues, so I tend to be the opposite of Alan. I boost that up. So if you put his photos next to mine, it's like complete opposite. Yeah. He'll shoot in, uh, during blue skies and I'll be inside, <laughs> you know, hibernating. Yeah. <laughs> But I think we're done uh, in terms of shooting. Uh, we're gonna go back down and uh, are you get hungry some food. I'm starving. I'm, starving I'm really, too. really. Are you hungry, Mari? Yeah, yeah. Mari's hungry as well. <laughs> Let's go down, guys. Mm. The street food here is 
That's good. Oh man. Man. I, I feel the best right now because like my hunger level was just like so good, man. Like after all these spots being shot, this is the best thing that happened today for me. No, honestly, it's been incredible. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, yeah. it's always it's always a pleasure exactly. to see yeah. this guy. I hope he gave you guys some useful tips on how you can improve your photography. I'm gonna leave his information in the bio, so make sure you guys check out his account. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel. He just started a YouTube channel with his girlfriend. Yeah, man. Um, and he's doing some really incredible stuff here in Hong Kong. And Thank hopefully, you. I'll see you. I, yeah, you'll be in Toronto. I'll be in Toronto in a month, so yeah. All right, guys. As always, remember yeah. to like, subscribe, and comment. Cheers. We'll see you guys all next week. Peace.